Here we are asked to evaluate this integral in cylindrical coordinates. And we are given a triple integral here in Cartesian coordinates in x, y, and z. So let's just start here by identifying the bounds. So we can see our outer bounds are in terms of z. So our Cartesian bounds, x, y, and z. We have z is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 2. We have our x bounds, x is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 2 times the square root of 2. And then we have that y is greater than or equal to x, less than or equal to the square root of 16 minus x squared. We know if we're converting to cylindrical coordinates that we need our coordinates in terms of z, r, and theta. So looking here, we're going to use these same z bounds in our cylindrical coordinates, but we're going to want to convert the x and y. So what I'm going to do is use these bounds that are given to us in x and y, and we'll determine their corresponding r and theta bounds by sketching a graph. So here is our y-axis and the x-axis. And let's see, looking at the bounds for y here, we have y is equal to x, and then we also have y is equal to the square root of 16 minus x squared. So we of course recognize that y equals x is just the diagonal line. y equals the square root of 16 minus x squared is a semicircle with a radius of 4. So we'll start, we'll sketch that. Here's our semicircle with a radius of 4. And then we also have the diagonal line. So this is y is equal to x. So now we're going to go ahead, because we're not sure what is our bounded region here, and to determine that we want to think about the x bounds. So we certainly know that x is bounded by the y-axis, okay, so this is where x is 0, and then this point of intersection here, that is representing the upper bound of x, that's 2 square root 2. So the region of integration in this case is here. So we can certainly see by looking at our picture here that our radius bounds, r is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to the radius of the semicircle, which is 4. And our job is to determine the theta bounds. So we can see here, again, thinking about that y is bounded at x is 0. This is also where theta is equal to pi over 2. But we need to determine our radial arc here. What is this? Theta. And we can actually use a special right triangle here to determine that. From this point of intersection, if we drop down to the x-axis, we create that right angle. So we know that this side of our triangle is 2 square root 2. And this side of our triangle is also 2 square root 2. So we can see that we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle, or pi by 4, pi by 2, pi by 4. So this is that theta that we were missing. And we can say here now that theta is greater than or equal to pi by 4, less than or equal to pi over 2. So we have our z bounds, and we have now our r and theta bounds. And we're ready to set up our triple integral. And again, we are using cylindrical coordinates. So we started by, we were given 0 to 2, 0 to 2 times the square root of 2, 0 to the square root of 16 minus x squared of the natural exponential raised to a minus x minus y. So I'm going to factor that negative out. So I have minus parentheses x squared plus y squared, and the sorter was 
dy, dx, dz. And so we're switching to cylindrical coordinates here. So I'll keep theta on the outside. That's pi over 4 to pi over 2. Our radius bounds were 0 to 4. And our z bounds are still 0 to 2. Now the integrand is changing. We replace this x squared plus y squared with the radius squared. So we have minus r squared. And our differential is r dz dr d theta. And then we're ready to go. So let's evaluate the inner integral. So that's with respect to z. So we can pull this r times the natural exponential raised to the minus x squared to the outside of the integral. And we have the integral from 0 to 2 dz. So this is just r times the natural exponential raised to the r squared times z, and we're evaluating z from 0 to 2. So this leaves us with 2r times the natural exponential raised to the minus r squared. And so we're now ready for the middle integral. And this is with respect to the radius. So this is 2 times the integral from 0 to 4 of r times the natural exponential raised to the r squared dr. And we'll need to use our u substitution here. So I'm going to let u be minus r squared. We differentiate du dr, leaves us with minus 2r. And solving for dr, we have minus du all over 2r is equal to dr. And we're also going to go ahead and we'll change our bounds to match our variable u. So we have u of 0 would be minus 0 squared, which is just 0. And then we have u of 4, which gives us minus 4 squared, which is negative 16. So therefore, u is an element of the closed interval 0 to negative 16, which makes us a little bit nervous. We see this is a contradiction. We always want our intervals to be from the smallest to the largest, but we'll fix this with the order of integration property. So plugging these substitutions in, we have 2 times the integral from 0 to negative 16 of r times the natural exponential raised to the minus u multiplied by du by 2r. And conveniently, both the 2s and the r's cancel each other out. So we have minus the integral from 0 to negative 16 times the natural exponential raised to the u du. And then we want to flip the bounds here. So applying that order of integration, we have minus times minus the integral from negative 16 to 0, natural exponential raised to the 0 du, and a negative times a negative creates a positive, leaving us with this cute general antiderivative, negative 16, or the integral from negative 16 to 0, natural exponential raised to the u du, and this is e to the u from negative 16 to 0. So we have the natural exponential raised to the 0 minus the natural exponential raised to the negative 16, or 1 minus the natural exponential raised to the minus 16. And now, last but not least, we are ready to evaluate the outer integral. So all of this is constant. We'll keep this 1 minus the natural exponential raised to the negative 16 out side of our integral, which is from pi by 4 to pi by 2 d theta. So I have 1 minus the natural exponential raised to the minus 16 theta from pi over 4 to pi over 2. So I have 1 minus the natural exponential raised to the negative 16 multiplied by pi over 2 minus pi over 4. So that becomes just pi by 4. So this is pi multiplied by 1 minus the natural exponential raised to the negative 16 over 4. 
And this is our beautiful final answer.